Hello, friendos. It is I, Ian Higton, and thanks to the combined power of the Eurogamer editorial team, I've got in my grubby little mitts here a whopping great list of 65 upcoming games that we here at Eurogamer just can't wait to play in 2024. And it's all ordered by date of release too, or at least it is for now, so let's cross our fingers for as few delays as possible, shall we? Now, don't get me wrong here, this isn't just your standard boring list of AAA games, remakes and big name sequels that we already know are coming. Oh no, while those are in there too, there's also plenty of genuinely new stuff to look forward to this year, including a whole host of gorgeous looking indie games that range from the wholesome to the horrifying and plenty more in between. This isn't an exhaustive list though, and there are plenty more games due out in 2024, including, I'm sure, loads that we don't even know about yet. So sit back, enjoy this list of video game anticipation, and once it's done, if we've missed out on something that's caught your eye in 2024's release schedule, let us and everyone else know in the comments below. Crikey, a remaster of The Last of Us 2 already? At this rate, Sony will be remastering games that came out in 2023 soon as well. Thankfully, along with a remaster of its excellent yet harrowing campaign, this one features an intriguing new mode too. No return strings together random encounters offering players a sort of survival roguelike experience, which sounds like a cool addition, but doesn't quite make up for the cancellation of the much anticipated Factions multiplayer spin off. Besides having perhaps the greatest video game title in recent memory, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth also takes Sega's series to Hawaii for more turn-based action and mini-games, including one called Sicko Snap, where you have to take photos of strange, heavily muscled, leotard-wearing, mask-sporting sickos doing sick, sick deeds throughout the city. Although that has me asking the question, who exactly is the sicko in that case? Because... You're the one taking the photos. Well, whoever it is, this one is a very easy sell. We're in. Hopefully, the developers will take out the colorblind option that causes seizures before Tekken 8 comes out, because as well intended as that option was, recent videos of the mode in action caused some big issues for people who watched it on Twitter. Aside from that though, there are redesigned heroes, a new heat system, and an arcade mode in which you play as a custom character who is new to Tekken and enters a tournament against several veterans and pros. Veterans and pros who look down on you and regularly smack talk you for being a newbie before matches, of course. Life to the living, death to the dead. Life to the living, death to the dead. Banishers Ghosts of Eden is a love story riddled with player decisions, which is basically what developer Don't Nod does best. Throw some supernatural forces and action RPG elements into the mix too, and this intimate story between two fated lovers who also happen to be ghost hunters could well offer a few surprises too. Or should that be boo? Hooray! The classic core Tomb Raider trilogy returns in this remastered collection of some of the best games in the series, whether that be old or rebooted Croft. 
Tomb Raider 2 alone is justification for buying this day one, so let's just hope that this remaster has treated all the games with the care they deserve. And also, maybe if the swimming controls could be improved a bit, that would also be lovely, because I I'm not sure I've gotten over the rage that they gave me the first time around. Ubisoft's pirate adventure Skull and Bones is almost here after years of haunting E3 and propping up countless lists of vaporware. Rise through the ranks of piratedom and go from a scurvy dog to a fearsome pirate kingpin as you explore beautiful ocean vistas in this seafaring game that most people assumed had sunk without a trace. Will it end up being worth the wait, or will it be a piece of ship? I guess we'll find out in February. Maybe. Observe and act to collect Nintendo's crossover classic Mario vs. Donkey Kong gets a welcome update as you use your brain and a collection of wind-up Marios to overcome various complex platforming stages. Previous games in this series are ingenious and Moorish, so we expect Nintendo fans to go completely ape over this one. Mario vs. Donkey Kong launches on Nintendo Switch February 16th. Pacific Drive is an interesting mix of the familiar and the sort of unexpected. Not only are you tasked with exploring a cursed, stalker-style zone where odd experiments have muddled with reality in dangerous ways, but you're also keeping your 80s station wagon alive as you go. Hunting for parts, crafting new fenders and bonnets, and worrying a lot about the state of your tyres is the order of the day here. So it's basically roadside picnic meets my summer car, and you know what? We can't wait to give it a test drive. With its Star Wars Dark Forces remaster, Night Dive is bringing one of the more beloved Star Wars games back to life, and I myself couldn't be happier. Dark Forces is a first-person shooter set within the Rebel Alliance's covert division, and Kyle be damned if it wasn't one of my favourite games to play back in the mid-90s. Parts of the plot were retconned by Rogue One, if memory serves correctly, but even still, it will be a nostalgic treat to play through it all again. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the second part of a trilogy that remakes, and also reimagines, Final Fantasy VII. Which begs the question, what will the final part of the trilogy be called? Final Fantasy VII Afterbirth, perhaps? Eww. Expect plenty of surprises along the way, with all the familiar Final Fantasy trappings included too. It's upon us. The reunion. When worlds merge, I'm waiting, Cloud. Well, a lowly tarnished. Autocorrect likes to change the name Erd Tree to Nerd Tree, which is pretty funny in my opinion, but there's nothing nerdy about the star power of Elden Ring, of course, nor about the prospect of an expansion. We've only had scraps of information to go on. It seems to take place in a world where the Erd Tree is corrupted, but why and whose world is it? The tentative date of February is not concrete either, as it's just based on a retailer leak, but we've got our fingers crossed for it anyway. For all of us. Proximity alert. Control the strike Many of you are feeling overwhelmed. We've got incoming. incoming. Doubting yourselves. Homeworld 3 is the latest instalment in the legendary space strategy series, and this one is looking better than ever. 
Homeworld 3 got held up in development and missed its intended 2023 release date. But what was bad news for past us is good news for 2024 us, especially seeing as that long wait is nearly over. Now, I must be more than a scientist. I am Fleet Command. Paradox does The Sims in Life By You, which promises an open world and total control of the humans that you create. Which, if my knowledge of The Sims is anything to go by, means dropping the poor things into swimming pools and removing the ladders so you can watch them drown, or bricking them up in a basement and forcing them to create art in return for the occasional bathroom break. The game's launching in early access first, so that means there's a bit of time for Paradox to iron out any quirks and for savage players to fine-tune their torture methods. Alone in the Dark's sumptuous Southern Gothic vibe and an all-star cast of Jodie Comer and David Harbour will make this reboot of one of the more venerable series in games something special. Or at least we hope it will. I mean, it can't be any worse than the 2008 Alone in the Dark game, surely? Or how about 2015's Alone in the Dark Illumination, which was Atari's dismal attempt at rebooting the series by turning it into a four-player cooperative shooter? OK, with a chequered history like that, maybe we won't get our hopes up too much just yet, but come on, it's got to at least be better than Uwe Boll's Alone in the Dark film from 2005, uh, hasn't it? Welcome to the Madhouse, Detective. Word. Reach the castle that the Arisen had been found. Capcom's party-based RPG series is back. It's bigger, it's got more monsters, and apparently, according to me, because I played a couple of hours of the game for a preview last year, Dragon's Dogma 2 is still as rough and ready as ever. Which, don't get me wrong, means that it should be just as entertaining as the original was, but still with some of that lovable jank that you remember from the first game. Become Detective Peach, investigate clues, and track down who done it. Princess Peach hops through different identities and genres in Princess Peach Showtime, a fascinating looking game set within a series of different stage plays. This will actually be Peach's third outing as the main protagonist in a video game, following on from 2005's Super Princess Peach for the DS and Princess Toadstool's Castle Run, which was an LCD game from 1990 that ran on a watch. This one should look way better graphically than both of those, though, hopefully, and it's just the kind of cheerful oddity that you'd expect to see from Nintendo as the Switch bows out itself. Princess Peach Showtime makes its debut on Nintendo Switch March 22nd. What a looker synergy is. It applies a lovely pastel palette and Mobius's scratchy comic book lines to the city builder genre, but what really caught our eye here is the extra emphasis that the game places on understanding your environment. You'll need to scan plant life and other natural elements in order to adapt to a world that's full of dangerous weather conditions and natural disasters as you look to protect your citizens on a hostile planet. My men are still lying out there, and I can't even bury them! Surely one of the most widely anticipated games on this list, Stalker 2 is the follow-up to the cult classic from Ukrainian developer GSC Gameworld. That development team has been through their fair share of real-life nightmares as they work to bring the game to our computers, though. And these include being the victims of Russian hacks, studio fires, more Russian cyber attacks, staff going to war, and, of course, some good old-fashioned development hell. So here's hoping that their hard work and uncompromisable determination to finish the game against all odds is rewarded in the end. I am blind, but it is you 
who cannot see. The stories are about an adventurous family of movement trolls living in a lovely house with many interesting friends. Snufkin Melody of Moomin Valley is a game about restoring the harmony of Moomin Valley after a series of grotesque parks appear and ruin the valley's natural balance. But to be honest, none of that premise matters, considering I was in as soon as I heard the words Moomins and video game. This is a musical adventure game with plenty of puzzles that should be suitable for the whole family, although the mention of stealth sections in the game blurb is a little concerning. The game is set to release on PC and console in 2023, and you can wishlist it on Steam right now. Hyperlight Breaker is the fully 3D roguelite follow-up to the acclaimed 2016 game Hyperlight Drifter, and it's one we've been waiting on for a while now. Early access is now pinned to begin early this year, and at that point we'll get to see what 3D and co-op bring to an already cracking idea. Fingers crossed then that it's not hyper shite. In a few years time, you're going to join them, so that when you wake up, you'll wake up somewhere better. For some, you only need to get halfway through the name Ghibli-inspired before a game gets added to the wishlist. But this one does have some pedigree, as it comes from the world art director of Overwatch 2, Helder Pinto, and new studio Nova Dust Entertainment. Described as a peaceful game of adventure, exploration and meditation, this one looks to be all about movement and atmosphere. From this trailer alone, it feels like it could be one of the most successful adoptions of that wistful animation style that Ghibli has since the first Nino Kuni. By sending you ahead, I'm staking my heart on the future. You have been chosen to govern a land of great peril and promise. It has suffered long from the scourge of banditry. Manor Lords consists of medieval city building, total war style tactical battles and complex economic simulation, which all combine to give off some strong mountain blade vibes. Or maybe banished, or really a few of these types of games all mashed together. This one has most of Eurogamer interested in it, and by the looks of the wish list, a large chunk of Steam's user base as well. But not me, because I find strategy games dull as ditch water, and even thinking about them makes me feel like I'm going to fall into a... <laughs> Title, Manor Lords. Game preview. Coming to PC Game Pass, April 26th, 2024. Still Wakes the Deep is the perfect TikTok game in many ways. It's horror, it has a distinct backrooms aesthetic, and it's set on an old oil rig where things are going mysteriously awry. Pretty sure it's not made by a bunch of insufferable assholes though, so maybe it's not completely TikTok after all. Even without a story or set pieces, this looks like it would be a wonderful place to poke around in, and because of that, we cannot wait to play it. Humans are so unpredictable and complicated. There is almost nothing to understand. Using genuine Aardman-style stop-motion sculptures for animation, Harold Halibut looks utterly extraordinary. In fact, I just booted up the official site to have a quick read-up on it, and I was greeted by a quote from Elijah Wood, which says, Holy shit, this looks extraordinary! Which is not really something you'd expect to hear come out of the mouth of a hobbit, is it? Unless, I guess he's been at that barrel of old Toby again, the little stoner. Anyway, Harold Halibut is a narrative game about life on a spaceship stuck under the ocean. And just look at it! Tactile, intimate and sumptuously lit. We just can't wait to find out more. Door.
Farthest Frontier is an impressive city-building game that's about striking out on the American frontiers and taming a wilderness to make a new home. What makes this one different is that it's very zoomed in. It's all about individuals and slow progression, and after a year and a half in early access, it is nearly ready to emerge in full. So get ready to establish food supplies, fight off deadly diseases, and defend your home against raiders sometime soon. Someone at Eurogamer described Animal Well to me as 2024 Spelunky. But while Animal Well definitely does feature some spelunking, this pixelated wonder looks more like a Metroidvania game to me. This ingenious and atmospheric game of exploration and discovery promises to be riddled with weird secrets, and I'm excited to get down under with it to see if I dig it once it releases. What is this music? I believe the kids call it K-pop music. Just K-pop. Turn it down. Leave my music A road alone. trip across a near-future America is the setting for Dustborn, a story-driven action-adventure game from Norwegian developer Red Thread Games. You play as Pax, an exiled con artist who has the ability to weaponize language, allowing you to not only change the course of the story as you go, but also to smack people around in battle. So, whoever came up with that sticks and stones rhyme then was completely lying out of their ass. What do you have to say? Flock is the next game from Hollow Ponds and Richard Hogg, the team behind Ho Hokum, I Am Dead, and Wilmot's Warehouse. This is a multiplayer co-op game about, it says here, the joy of flight and collecting adorable flying creatures with your friends, which sounds like an utter delight. Unless, of course, you're one of those flying creatures that everyone's capturing, I suppose. If that's the case, then Flock is probably more of a horror game about horrible humans who are kidnapping your friends and family, which, to be fair, is also a game I'd play. Despite a subtitle that sounds like some kind of horror adaption of Sesame Street, Destiny 2 The Final Shape is surely the most exciting Destiny expansion since, well, probably the time that Destiny 2 came out. This is because it's about gigantic space triangles, and we're going to assume that the final shape is a triangle off the back of this, which will presumably interact with Destiny's first shape, Big Circle. <laughs> Lol. Video games. <laughs> They're so silly. The story of Path of Exile is of a newcomer studio conquering a genre, and now a sequel, cleverly titled Path of Exile 2, is on the way. Powered by experience and resources and development time that the original game did not have, Path of Exile 2 looks set to blow the original out of the water, and what Grinding Gear Games has shown so far looks detailed and challenging and deep. This is a studio that knows what it does best and is doing what it does best, so expect great things. Do you hear it? It's restless. Frostpunk 1 remains one of the most thrilling city-building experiences we've ever had. It was a race to bolster your city against apocalyptic cold, whilst also not starving and not facing mutiny. It was hard, and that was the point, because the temptation was always there to pass tyrannical laws to alleviate the strain. How horrible would you have to be, and how far would you go in order to survive? 
Now Frostpunk is back with a new game engine and this time simple survival isn't the only goal. This time you have societal growth and dissenting factions within it to control. So can you keep everyone under control? We can't wait to find out. The rule of the Magi Lords is failing. Scold Against the Black Priory is another game we've had our eye on for a while. It's a retro style RPG with some absolutely superlative pixel art, set in a grim dark fantasy world. We might be reaching peak grim dark fantasy world quite soon, if we haven't already, but there is always room for a special game to come along and blow away any sense of overexposure. And this could well be the one. We woke the dragon, and for us, there is no salvation. There should be more games where you get to play as a ghost, so I am happy to tell you that in Haunty, which is this game here, you do. As a naive but brave ghost on a relentless quest for answers, you'll need to work through puzzles and light combat using the ability to control animals and the wider world around you. Haunty's striking visuals give off a remarkable atmosphere, with flashes of sandy yellow or neon turquoise standing out against its deep black backgrounds. Basically, we're hoping that this one plays as spooktacularly as it looks. It's hard to see Nyad in motion and not want to leap straight in. It's a game about wild swimming delivered from a top-down perspective and with a gorgeous pastel colour palette that promises to be the perfect tonic for the frayed tempers caused by life in the mid-2020s. Oh, and there are ducks in it too, and if you don't like ducks, well, to be honest, there's got to be something wrong with you and I think you'd probably deserve a good kick in the Nyads. Now go. Death to Kronos. Death to Kronos. Hades 2 is Supergiant's first ever sequel, and making it is probably quite a daunting task for the developers, as the original is a BAFTA award winning classic. The solution then? Well, to be fair, it's the solution to most of the world's problems, and that's to embrace witchcraft. That's right, it's another roguelike dungeon crawler rooted in Greek mythology, but this time you're playing as the immortal princess of the underworld who is able to infuse her weapons of night with ancient magic. And that's magic with a CK at the end, so you know it really means business. Wait for me, father. I'll be this. The creators of Quop and Ape Out come together for Baby Steps, a game in which you encounter the terrifying wilderness of the outside world, taking it one step at a time. Physics and animation combine in this gloriously unsettling game about a man who walks a little bit like I do the morning after an incredibly boozy Eurogamer Christmas party. Don't judge me, the drinks were free. They were free. What was I going to do? Not drink them? <laughs> Final Fantasy XIV heads west with Dawn Trail, an expansion that offers a new mountain and forest region alongside new jobs, a new level cap and all sorts of other bits and pieces. There's a lot to do and by the looks of it some lovely sunsets too. But it looks like the biggest sell is a new playable race called the Female Hrothgar, which should appeal to anyone out there who really wants to bang cats with human-shaped boobies. 
which scarily is probably going to be a way higher number than we as a species could possibly hope for. Honestly, stuff like this is why aliens don't want to talk to us, I'm sure. When you spot a ghost, pop! You can stun them with the strobe ball, then vacuum them up. Luigi's Mansion 2 was always a little overlooked, thanks to the fact that it was a 3DS exclusive, so it's nice to get a chance to revisit, or for those who didn't play it the first time around, finally visit its wonderfully haunted halls and ballrooms. The art style looks like it's handled the platform transition pretty well, but the ingenious and imaginative puzzles should hopefully be just as good as we remember them. So let's just hope that Luigi's Poltergust 5000 is the only thing doing all the sucking and blowing here, and not the new high-definition gameplay. Luigi's Mansion 2 HD creeps onto Nintendo Switch next summer. The dead seek to rule over everything we call home. I'll be damned if I let that happen. Lies of P turned out pretty well last year, so can another Souls-like tickle our fancy in 2024? Well, I was quite impressed by Flintlock when I watched a presentation of it a year or so ago, but then it kind of slipped off the release schedule, and to be honest with you, until I started writing the script for this video, I had forgotten it even existed. More development time cannot possibly hurt a game though, I, I hope. M maybe wait until reviews for Skull and Bones are out before you take my word for that statement. But either way, here's hoping that this mix of gods and guns will still feel fresh in 2024. Now I what is your life? My honor is my life. Take on the role of square-jawed future fascists once more in Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2, and this time mow down thousands of Tyranids, which curiously look exactly like the Xenomorph, but, you know, don't say that in front of a lawyer, obviously. Shh. The combat looks punchy, and there was a bit in a demo we saw where a swarm tries to run at you from across a bridge while you desperately hold them off from the other side, and it's that kind of set piece that immediately kicks any kind of horde-based shooter up a notch in our books. My pledge is eternal service. Getting closer to... Will it? Won't it? We've been waiting for Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines for years now, and it seemed to get so close to release before it suddenly disappeared once again into development hell. Now though, in true undead fashion, the project has resurfaced in development at the Chinese Room, and it appears to be stable and on course for a release this year. How much has changed since we last saw it? Well, we're already long in the tooth after all this waiting, so hopefully we'll find out soon. I will wait for you. But for those on the sidelines, football is the relentless pursuit of progress. Football Manager 2025 has been bigged up by Sports Interactive studio head Miles Jacobson as something of a revolution for the series, mainly because they've moved to a new engine and reworked the entire UI. It's about as big a deal as you can get in the sports sim world, and with FM24 already a brilliant entry in the series, we're all very excited. And by we, I mean the Eurogamer Wii, because I myself, well, I couldn't give a flying fuck. Progress never stops. Here we find Jot, the plucky squire, and his friends, Violet, Thrash, and Pip. The Plucky Squire is a game that gets at the purest magic of the medium. It's an action adventure in which you step from the pages of a book and carve a heroic path through the domestic world around you. 2D and 3D elements blend ingeniously, and it all looks beautiful too. 
Kind of like It Takes Two, but without the elephant dismemberment, crossed with a link between worlds, maybe, and then with a whole load of other stuff jammed in there, too. Honestly, I would be really surprised if this one isn't a proper smash hit when it releases on PC and consoles later in the year. Off the page and into adventure. Chunky and colourful, Unrailed 2, back on track, promises to be absolute carnage, as you and a bunch of friends build a train track while an engine is already chugging along the line. Prepare to fall out with people and prepare to swear a lot, but also be prepared to be chuff chuff chuffed as you choo choo choose to put this one on your wish list. What follows is a chilling chase through crumbling crypts, voodoo vaults, and the mysterious manor itself. Foolish Mortals takes players to the coast of Louisiana in the 1930s for a spooky treasure hunt as its protagonist, Murphy McCallan, investigates a haunted manor and gets into a spot of bother with an evil phantom that lives within. There is no set release date for this one yet, but it does have a downloadable demo available on Steam, so you'd be foolish not to give it a whirl to see if you want more. Tools. Foolish Mortals. This place gives me the creeps. That cauldron especially. I don't know. I wonder if a mermaid's tongue is like a human's tongue, or if it's like a fish's tongue, which can sometimes have teeth on them. There's only one way to find out, I guess, so someone point me in the direction of the nearest snoggable mermaid, please. Oh, wait, this mermaid's tongue is actually another adventure game, sorry, and, and it's one that sees the return of Detective Grimoire. Any follow-up to Tangle Tower would be welcome, of course, but one that sees you investigating the murder of the captain of the world's strangest submarine? Well, that's got to float anyone's boat. Senua's Saga Hellblade 2 sends you to Iceland for the next part of Senua's adventures in what looks to be a graphically stunning new Ninja Theory game. Intent on saving those who have fallen victim to the horrors of tyranny, Senua faces a battle of overcoming the darkness within and without. So parting with some cash when this one releases will probably be a Senua's sacrifice worth making. The Case of the Golden Idol, one of the most intriguing and ingenious games of recent years, gets a sequel here with The Rise of the Golden Idol, and this sequel takes players to the 1970s, which is a perfect era for more tales of improbable crime and disgusting murder. Explore the scenes of 15 different crimes, investigate the death and depravity found within, and piece together your own idea of what happened. This should be fantastic. Why do we talk to each other? Well, to be friendly. To make each other laugh. Kind Words was a game about writing nice, short messages to people anonymously online, which, as someone who regularly reads YouTube comments, seems like an unlikely piece of fiction to me. Anyway, Kind Words was all wrapped up in a lo-fi game to chill to aesthetic, and it was brilliant. And now there's a sequel called, you guessed it, Kind Words 2. And whereas in Kind Words 1 you were confined to a bedroom, in the sequel there's a world outside to explore. Games just don't get more wholesome than this. Unless you use it to just call YouTubers mean names, that is. The power you wield. 
secrets you keep. We still haven't seen what Obsidian can do with Microsoft as its owner and what those extra resources and stability have enabled. We've seen Grounded and Pentiment, sure, but both of those were small team projects. Avowed, however, is a big team project, and it's also a first-person fantasy RPG that looks a little bit like an Elder Scrolls game, if you, if you squint a bit. But you know what? The Outer Worlds was a pretty decent Fallout clone, so Obsidian doing the Elder Scrolls should be pretty great too. And hell, even at its worst, it'll still be a nice game to play as we wait for the Elder Scrolls 6 to come out ever. Digital Eclipse is doing something special with its playable history series. You only need to look at last year's The Making of Karateka to see that. But whose work could it feature next after the legendary Jordan Mechner? Well, none other than Llamasoft's Jeff Minter, of course. As the creator of Tempest, Attack of the Mutant Space Camels, last year's Aka R, and many more, Jeff Minter is a video gaming legend. And in Llamasoft, the Jeff Minter story, you'll be able to enter 42 of the weirdest, trippiest, and most sheepiest games ever created. Barmy, but brilliant. Um. It's an open world game, so initially you have to fly around with your little surveyor, explore and find a cool spot, but we'll just start our uh, settlement right here. The Falconeer still burns bright in our memory. It was a one-person project, an aerial combat game about riding around on giant falcons across a stormy archipelago. And at the core of its appeal was the distinct setting, the moodiness of it, the, the sorrow of it. For its follow-up, Falconeer Chronicles, creator Thomas Sala is reusing the setting, but the gameplay has completely changed. Now it's a freeform city builder with an emphasis on expression. Build what you want out there and shape it as you will, and then see what happens. It's out in early access already, but the full release will happen later this year. Thank goodness you're here is more northern than a flat cap and a cup of tea. It's a game drawn in a striking 90s Beano comic way in which you arrive in a northern English town as a travelling salesman who takes on increasingly odd jobs. This one looks to be one of the quirkier releases of the year, but also, dare I say, one of the most memorable. <laughs> Little Nightmares 3 will be the first game in the series that's not been developed by its creator, Tarsier. Instead, the reins have been handed to the Dark Pictures team, Supermassive Games. We're not sure why this has happened, but we're hoping that it won't make too much of a difference to the overall quality, as the previous games were absolute creepy classics, albeit creepy classics with some aggravating controls at times. Supermassive has done its fair share of great games in the past, though, but it has also put out quite a few stinkers too. So we're crossing our fingers and hoping for the best with this one. I just need a chance to finally be free. Wherever that takes me. Set within the original trilogy's time span, Star Wars Outlaws is an open world adventure set across a galaxy far, far away. Playing as a Han Solo like scoundrel called K Vess, who fights with a droid named ND5 by her side, you'll take on high risk, high reward missions from the galaxy's many crime syndicates. While most people will buy this game to enjoy some classic Star Wars action like blaster battles and deep space dogfights, Plenty of other people will be buying it because, for some reason, they really, really want to bang ND5. Oh. 
Star Wars Outlaws, coming 2024. A spiritual follow-up to the glorious thumper from the same composer and director, Thrasher looks like a headbanger. We're big into games that make you sit back and do the Neo voice, whoa, here. Although, for some of us, and I mainly mean me, that might be replaced by an expletive of choice. But if the Steam blurb includes the phrase mind-melting cosmic racer in it, which this one certainly does, then you can always count us in. By just four people, Arco is an action RPG that brings you three tales forged in bloodshed, laced with magic and united by revenge, and they're all presented in yet more glorious pixel art. Along with the branching story, a seemingly South American inspired location and a rebel bandit protagonist, complete with poncho and llama, there's also an intriguing simultaneous turn-based combat system, and we can't wait to find out how that works. Or doesn't work, if it's pants. Three Immortals almost stole the show at Xbox's Big Summer Showcase last year. A lean distillation of the MMO raid experience, it's about taking on bosses in 33 player co op, which is a fantastic idea in theory, but whether or not it actually works in practice, well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Luckily, it's launching into early access to begin with, so at least there'll be a chance to work out the kinks. They really missed a chance not calling it 32 Immortals, though. You know, you know. A deeply charming proposition, Dungeons of Hinterberg has you pootling about an Austrian alpine village part of the time before swanning off to a nearby dungeon for a bit of light combat and puzzle solving for the rest. Gameplay switches styles quite drastically from one dungeon to the next. You might be snowboarding through one or playing a top-down game in the other, but the magic here is all in the character, which is quirky and jovial and just desperately European. Horses is a deeply surreal looking black and white horror game from solo developer Andrea Luco Bolera. It looks brilliant and bizarre and crucially it's being published by Santa Ragioni, the Italian boutique publisher of the exceptional Milky Way Prince, The Vampire Star, Mediterranean Inferno and Saturnalia. If you like art house cinema and strongly considered buying yourself an aero press in the Boxing Day sales, this one's for you. I, I didn't write this one, by the way, so I just had to Google what an AeroPress was. And it's, it's a coffee maker. Today, I want to introduce you to my first solo project, Summer House. Summer House, at its core, is a game about creativity. A small-scale building game about assembling peaceful, enchanting little houses, Summer House looks like 2024's premier chill-out game, and it's from Friedman, a solo developer who's worked on some gems in the past, including Islanders and Pizza Possum, which I think is the best name for a video game I've ever read out loud. This one will be very much in pole position for the nicest Vibe Award at the end of the year. If small games with relaxing, creative gameplay are your thing, please be sure to wishlist Summer House on Steam and try the demo. Thank you.
Another from a tiny crew of independent developers, Despelote is a narrative adventure about childhood via playing football in the streets of Ecuador. The perfect accompaniment to your retro kit collection and subscription to Mundial, it looks like a gem of a coming of age story. This one is published by the people at Panic, who did Firewatch and Untitled Goose Game, so you can be sure that they really know their stuff. From the team behind Gris, Never is another artful game about big themes, following a protagonist and her wolf companion through a dying world. The pastely artwork is as glorious as you'd expect, and honestly, this one looks like it might cause a fair few people out there to shed a tear when they play it. But wait, you might be thinking, even a tough guy like you, Ian? And to that I say, never say never. Nominated for a bundle of awards, Paper Trail is a narrative puzzler that has you navigating the world by tearing and folding it over itself, revealing a quite miraculous spin on perspective. And I guess on paper as well. I mean, who knew paper could be so versatile? I thought it was just there for drawing dicks on, lol. Anyway, unlike my uncouth drawings, this game seems clever, intelligent and richly colourful all at once. Mother's grace forever. One thousand X resist, which I presume is what it's called, and not one thousand times resist, which is a maths question that I do not know the answer to, is a far future sci-fi about a group of androids living alongside the last surviving human, who's called the All Mother. Likely to fall to just one side of the fine line between tropey and inspired, 1000X Resist is channeling a bit of Blade Runner 2049 in its tale of deception and post-disaster mystery, and we are certainly curious to give it a go. Oh, and it helps that it comes from Citizen Sleeper's publisher Fellow Traveller too, of course. And that is your lot, and what a gorgeous lot it was and all. And you know what? Even just going through that list and writing up some of the entries had me thinking about all the other games that are coming out this year that aren't on this list, like Enshrouded and Pal World and Nightingale and so on and so on and so on. So once again, please let us know what games you're excited for in 2024 in the comments below, and let's get hyped for another year full of amazing video games. Oh, and talking about amazing, that's what you'll be if you like this video and or subscribe to Eurogamer, preferably both, because then you'll be able to join us for all the fun that we have planned for you this coming year. Goodbye and good gaming. Oh.